This, this, this is the Killer Innovations Podcast with Phil McKinney. Keep in mind that the information and opinions expressed in this podcast are Phil's and Phil's alone. And they don't necessarily reflect those of his past, current, or future employers. Now, here's Phil McKinney. In my current role, I collect up all of my executive team every two weeks. We meet in the conference room and we listen to pitches. These are the new ideas or existing ideas that are underway within the innovation pipeline. Now, I look forward to these meetings. It's my opportunity to really hear those new ideas that are coming up from within the team, but also to get a status against existing projects, projects that have already received their funding and they're coming up on their gate reviews. Now, in this particular case a couple of weeks ago, one of the project teams was coming in not so much for a gate review, but they had learned some new information about their project and was needing to get approval for expanding the budget. Now, typically I'm fairly skeptical on these kinds of proposals. I want to wait until we get to some form of deliverables before I'm going to approve a new budget increase. But in this case, they came in, they presented their ideas, they presented what they'd learned, their current status, and their new idea, the new plan. Now, I started to get excited to the point where As they were wrapping up their presentation, I looked right at the project lead and I said, what is it going to take to speed up your project? Do you need more money? Do you need more resources? What is it that's going to be required to speed up your idea, to get it into the market or get it done and available faster? Now, in most cases, the project teams would look at me and they would just get all excited and come up with some new high number and double their staff, whatever. In this case, this project lead squared up, looked me right in the eye, and the only thing this person said was rule number four. I said rule number four, and then it flashed in my mind. I remembered that I had written a blog post in August of 11 called The Seven Laws of Innovation. And what he was actually quoting was law number four, which is the law of patience. Now, the law of patience in the blog post reads that innovation takes longer than you expect. Don't try to rush it. It's always going to happen longer than what you would ever expect. You tend, we tend to get overly excited about innovations. We want them faster. We want them now. They take longer than we expect. Now, here it was, a project lead in my organization, squaring up with me and basically saying, be patient. It's not about the resources. There's a certain amount of activity that just has to happen in the case of the discovery. Now, the Seven Laws of Innovation was written in August of 11. It was basically a collection of laws that I had collected up over the years that said, what are kind of those elements that every organization needs to have in place really to have an innovation culture, an innovation management team, a process, an expectation. What are those laws that really allow you to create a robust pipeline of innovation? Some of the other laws, law number one is the law of leadership. Does your senior executive really get innovation? But in this case, the law of patience. And here it was, I was the one, the CEO, and me being an innovation guy that had lost my patience. Now, that's not that uncommon. We all want, when we have ideas or we see ideas from other people, we tend to want to get all excited and really want to push it forward. Now, in the case of the law of patience, what it really says is that innovation takes time, more time than expected. You need to take the long view, not the short view of the immediate gratification. You need to understand that innovation takes time. And don't try to tie innovation to artificial dates. We tend to, inside of our organizations, tie our innovation cycles to crazy things like, oh, I don't know, budgets, right? So we have to re-justify a budget every year. And How do you do that with innovation? It doesn't apply. How do you get a CFO to be patient, much less a CEO, such as myself, to be patient? Now, when I mean the word patience, what I'm not talking about is is that you're just passive. You just sit back and wait for it to happen. Patience is not passive. 
It's active. It's not about sitting back and waiting. Some other terms you can I could have used in place of saying the law of patience, which would have been like the law of perseverance or the law of enduring, right? Patience means keep going. You got to keep pushing yourself. You got to be patient for the result, not the amount of energy to get to the result, but have to be patient for the actual end result. And we tend to want it now. At least I know I do. When I work on my own ideas or things that I'm working on, or I get excited about the work that my team is working on, or I see, and I can sit back and I can actually see what the impact of that idea is going to have. I want it now. I want to be able to stand on the rooftop and just yell it out to everybody what this idea is. But I need the idea done. And I need to practice what I preach in this case of patience. Now, when we lack patience, when we're working on things and we just you know want it now, and we, we kind of blow our cool when it comes to things that aren't happening at the pace we're happening, we really exhibit what I would call two characteristics. The first is worry. Now, worry is, in some cases, can be introduced as self-doubt. You're asking yourself, am I on the right path? Is this even the right idea? Is my hypothesis correct? Is this thing ever going to work out? Um, I must not be doing enough, so i got to work more hours. Um, Someone else is going to get to this idea first. We worry. Now, worrying doesn't advance your ability to get to the innovation any faster, right? But it's a natural human emotion. When we've got these ideas and and we're losing our patience, we tend to start to worry. Recognize that worry and put it in check. Set it aside. It actually distracts you. It's going to actually slow you down from getting to that innovation result. Now, the other area that people tend to exhibit when they lose patience is they get angry. Now, this is the exhibit. This is what I exhibit when I lose patience is I'll get angry. I get angry at myself, right? Did we do the wrong project plan? You know, why, why is this taking two months versus two weeks? What is it I don't know? Why am I not? Why, what didn't I think of? In some cases, we get angry at others. You know, they aren't trying hard enough. They aren't committed enough. They aren't working enough hours. Um, but we exhibit this in the form of anger. Now, if your boss, or be honest with yourself, if you are the boss, and when bosses lose patience, they actually exhibit something else. And that is they tend to jump back into the project. They've got a project team who's working on a project. But soon as they start losing their patience, what do bosses do? They jump back into the project. They want to get in there. They think that they know more and can, in fact, uh, fix the problem. And they start micromanaging. Now, none of these actions are helpful. Whether you have that self-doubt and you're worrying, whether you exhibit in the form of anger, or worse, if you're the boss and you're jumping back into the project or you're micromanaging a project, that is not helpful. That is not following this law of patience. So just as looking with, uh, we lose our patience with our spouses and our kids. I mean, well, who hasn't, right? The kids are off doing something and they're not doing it fast enough. You're yelling at them like, hurry up, get the grass cut. Or why is it taking you so long to sweep the steps? We lose our cool, right? But let's face it. When we do that, that's actually destructive. It's destructive with our relationship with our kids. It's destructive with our relationship with our spouses. Losing patience with ourselves or with our teams around innovation can also be destructive. Yes, it's hard to check these emotions, but we need to. It's not about the fact of who we are, or it's our idea, or whatever. We have to have patience in all things, whether it's with our spouse, with our kids, or in the innovation projects that we're working on. So what I've learned, what I've taught myself over the years, which was, the first thing is, is just take a deep breath. Take a half a step back. Get some form of perspective. Now, I'm now getting in the habit of actually going back and rereading what I've written in the past. So in this case, go back and reread what I'd written back in August on the Law of Patience. 
Also, find a coach or a mentor or a peer, somebody that you can be transparent with, and check your concerns. Are you really being impatient or is the project just way off track? It's, you know, that's the wheels have fallen off the bus and you do need to jump back in. Or your your idea is just never going to um, mature out and, and turn into anything. So just stop it and go on to a new project. There's a time and there's a fine line between being patient and being foolish. And you need to find where that boundary is. And what I've learned over the years in some cases we lose perspective so find a coach or a mentor who you can kind of check these concerns with make sure that you're not uh, you haven't gone uh, crazy and then get that perspective go away go away for a holiday go away for the weekend don't think about that project get some you know thoughts on going on to something completely new and then come back and look at the project or your idea with a fresh pair of eyes Don't turn into that person that worries about every little thing on the project. So if it's your project, you're worrying about it. If you're the manager, you turn back into a micromanager. Do not turn into that person. So just as my project lead, back to the starting story, when I had this project lead come and go eye to eye with me, and the only thing, literally the only thing he said before he exited the room was law number four. And it was after he left the room that my light bulb went off. And so here I am, supposed to be the innovation guy. Sometimes I even have to be reminded that innovation takes longer than you expect. You can't always have it when you want it. And you just need to get used to it. Thank you for listening to this week's podcast. I truly do appreciate you taking the time out of your busy schedule. Please leave comments or questions over at philmckinney.com. The podcast, we're trying to get back into a regular schedule. If there are topics or questions you would like to have answered in future podcasts, again, leave those as questions over at philmckinney.com within the blog post for this particular podcast. And with that, thank you for your time, and we'll talk to you real soon. Bye bye.